So in this video, we have the example of a block on an inclined plane. It says we consider a stationary block on the incline described in the last problem, except the incline is changed to 20 degrees instead of 60. Coefficient of static friction is 0.6. Does the block move? So that's our first question. Why or why not? And if the block moves, determine the acceleration. If the block does not move, determine the size of the force of static friction. So this problem's worded a little differently than ones we've dealt with in the past. So we're kind of given this open-ended option of determining what's going on in this problem. So let's first start by drawing our coordinate system like we always do. I'm going to choose a tilted coordinate system so that the x-axis lies along the incline. And then I'm going to choose the direction normal to that incline being the positive y direction. And then the incline going to the right is the positive x direction. So we got that down. Our system is the block. So we can draw our free body diagram. We're gonna first start with non-contact forces. That is the weight force acting downwards. We're told that the block, M block, has a mass of M. So the weight force is equal to Mg. Since the block is resting on the surface, the surface is going to apply a normal force in the normal direction to the surface, which is the positive y direction. So we'll draw that here. So that's F sub N. And then our third and final force is the force of static friction. So that is what's going to oppose the motion going in the positive x direction. So we want to draw that in the negative x direction. And that is little f sub s. So now we have all of our forces drawn. The next step is to break up all of our forces into x and y components. The static friction force is already in the x direction fully, so we don't need to do anything with that. Likewise, for the normal force, we don't need to break it up into components since it's fully in the y direction. So the only one we have to break up into components is the weight force. So I'm going to draw my x component first along the x-axis, and then my y component. So we've got that, head to tail, and I'm going to label that W sub X and W sub Y. So the next step is determining the angle. So I like to draw out triangles to kind of help myself out. The incline itself has a triangle that looks like this, where this is 90, this is 20 degrees for the incline. And then our weight triangle is here and here. This is our 90 degrees. And so this is W, this is W sub X and W sub Y. So since these are similar triangles, we can match up the 90s and we know that this angle right here is equal to 20 degrees. So we can calculate our components for weight. The weight force in the x direction is equal to the weight mg times the opposite, which is sine of 30 degrees. The y component of weight is equal to the weight mg times cosine, or the adjacent side, cosine of 30 degrees. 
So now we need to figure out what it is we're trying to find. So we're asked, does the block move? That's the main question. All of the other ones are pretty much follow up questions based off of whether what our answer is to does the block move? So the question we have to ask ourselves is, how can we determine whether or not the block moves? So it's going to be moving along the x direction. So we need to look at the forces in the x direction. Mainly, we need to focus on what is the maximum static friction and is that greater than the weight force that is pulling the block down the ramp. So if friction is greater than the weight force, then the block's not going to move. But if the maximum static friction is less than the weight force, then the weight force is going to overtake that frictional force and the block's going to accelerate. So we need to determine if Fx max is greater than the weight force in the x direction. So based off of that, we need to determine what Fs, the static frictional force, the max static frictional force is. And so we first need to use Newton's second law in the y direction. The sum of the forces is equal to mass times acceleration in the y direction so that we can get the normal force because the normal force is a component of the frictional force. So we then can use that to solve for Fs max, which is equal to the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. And then finally, we can sum the forces in the x direction to determine if there is acceleration in the x direction. So our first step is to apply Newton's second law in the y direction. And that allows us, since the block is not moving up or down in the y direction, the acceleration is zero. So the normal force is equal to the y component of the weight force, which is equal to mg times cosine of 30 degrees. Now that we know the normal force, we can calculate the maximum of the frictional force, static frictional force. And remember, the static frictional force can be any force up to this maximum value. It can be less than but it can't go beyond this maximum value. So this gives us a backstop to judge whether or not the block can fall down or not. So substituting in the normal force we just found and multiplying it by the static friction coefficient of 0.6, we get the expression for the static frictional force maximum. So to know if the block is accelerating, the condition for that to happen is that the weight component, weight force component in the x direction is greater than the maximum static frictional force. So the static friction won't be able to oppose that weight force. So substituting in the expressions for those two values, we see that mg is on both sides. So we actually don't need to know anything about the mass of the block. The cosine and sine of the angles are just numbers, so we find that the static frictional force maximum is 0 0.563, which ends up being greater than the weight component in the x direction, which is 0 0.34. And so because of that, the block remains stationary. And that's because the static frictional force maximum is greater than the weight force component in the x direction. So if static friction is able to oppose that weight force. But this quantity right here is not the static frictional force. Because if you were to sum the forces in the x direction, then you would get a you would get a negative value, which means you would get an acceleration. But this block we know is remaining stationary. That's because the expression for the static frictional force, F sub S, is equal to 
less than or equal to mu sub s f sub n. So the maximum it can be is that 0 0.563, but it can be less than that. And so we need to sum the forces in the x direction to figure out what that frictional force is. So taking number three here and summing it, sum of the forces in the x direction is equal to m a sub x. We know that the block is stationary, so it's not going to be accelerating. So we have w sub x, the weight force in the x direction, minus the frictional, static frictional force is equal to zero. So the static frictional force is equal to the weight component in the x direction, which we know to be mg sine of 30. And that's our final answer.